Hey, welcome aboard. My name's Jim Grant, and I'd like to share with you my passion for travel, journalism, and underwater adventure. I suppose you could say my inspiration for travel came first from my grandfather, who toured the world many times as a travel director aboard the famed Norwegian American Lines. My first encounter with adventure occurred with my family in a remote Eskimo village far above the Arctic Circle. Growing up in Rhode Island, much of my life was spent on or underneath the water. Whether it was diving for lobsters or recovering anchors for Newport's yachting crowd, most of each summer day was spent beneath the ocean. An opportunity arose in college to join an archaeological expedition in the Negev Desert on the borders between Egypt and Israel. During the week, we excavated Bronze Age artifacts, but during the weekends, we were free to travel the storied land. I took the opportunity to travel the coast and dive. In the Red Sea, I learned of the beautiful and diverse contrast between underwater life there and the stark and barren desert. Subsequent military service as a Marine Corps captain not only introduced me to some of the finest men and women with whom I have ever worked, but also afforded me the opportunity to dive in more intriguing locations. One of my favorite locations was in the East China Sea off the island of Okinawa. We'd set up camp on the beach just on the edge of the jungle and dive amongst archipelagos that reached over a thousand feet to the bottom. At night we'd dine in freshly caught fish, including one of my favorites, octopus, sautéed in local sauces. To combine my love of travel and satisfy a strong interest in journalism, I entered Syracuse University's SI Newhouse School of Public Communications. My first assignment after graduation involved traveling to Northern Ireland to report on British security efforts to counter terrorism in the sectarian neighborhoods of Belfast and Londonderry. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to write for a wide variety of newspapers and magazines, ranging from the New York Times and the International Herald Tribune to Sports Illustrated for Kids. I've covered travel, business, political, and environmental stories, and have interviewed personalities from foreign dignitaries to Afghani Mujahideen. But whenever possible, I've involved my love of the ocean with my work. Whether it's exploring the treacherous reefs of the Dry Tortugas for the remains of the 1622 Spanish treasure fleet, or reporting on the best hotels and restaurants in Bermuda, followed by a dive on the Civil War blockade runner the Marie Celeste, Diving, travel, and journalism are a big part of my life. But there is a little more to me. As a competitive swimmer, I've earned over 40 gold, silver, and bronze medals in national and state championships. And as a lifeguard captain for the famed Ironman Triathlon, I'm responsible for the safety of over 2,000 swimmers, all in the water at the same time. I've climbed mountains ranging from 14,000-foot Pikes Peak to all of the 46ers in New York, with a lot of peaks in between. My other sports run from Nordic skiing to keeping the marksmanship skills I learned as a marine sharp. But back to the underwater world. For tens of thousands of years, humans have made use of the sea for food, exploration, and transportation. But until fairly recently, any vessels, treasure, or even entire cities that slipped beneath the water were essentially lost forever. But that's changing as technology allows us to explore more and more of the 70% of our world that's covered with water. Imagine making your way along ancient city streets that haven't felt footsteps for thousands of years. Ahead of you lie the foundations of Cleopatra and Mark Antony's palaces, exquisitely preserved after millennia underwater. You're in the royal quarter of Egypt's ancient Alexandria. While little remains topside of the dynasty, the underwater site remains nearly pristine. Or just think of being in the thriving commercial center of Port Royal, Jamaica in June of 1692. Folks there woke to the promise of fine weather with glassy, still waters reflecting a deep blue Caribbean sky. By day's end, however, 90% of the city was gone as 2,000 buildings and as many people simply sank into the sea within minutes of a massive earthquake. For nearly 250 years, Port Royal lay undisturbed until underwater archaeologists excavated a trove of artifacts ranging from clay pipes to hordes of Spanish silver. So extraordinary were the finds here that researchers refer to the sunken city as the submarine equivalent of Pompeii. Now as much fun as I've had in 30 years of diving, I know there are hundreds of sites around the world still waiting to be explored and shared with viewers, and I can't wait. Well, that's a brief look at my life underwater. You'll see I've included a few concepts for your view, but more importantly, if you have some projects in development you think could benefit from a personality like myself, I'd love the opportunity to meet with you personally. But now, it's back to the world I love.